Has this ever happened to you? I know it's here somewhere. Where is it? Where is it? Arg! Well, hello. Irene at Inkworks here. Today I want to talk about how I store my loose artwork. So if the intro to this video resonated with you, stick around because I'll explain my current storage system and what led me to it, all while flipping through selected art pieces. There's a variety of options out there. Drawers, boxes, binders, portfolios, and so on. Okay, I admit it, for a while I was keeping my artwork stashed in a drawer. Literally, a dresser drawer. And I wanted a better system. Decades ago, I'd had one of those Etoya art pro folio things with the clear sleeves, so I figured I'd go that route. Unfortunately, the prices I was seeing for that brand were beyond my budget, but I found something similar on Amazon for a little less, and that was these Dunwell art portfolios. Now, this video is not sponsored in any way. I purchased these items all on my own. Just want you to know that. In case this comes across as some sort of sales pitch, it isn't. I'm simply sharing the storage solution that works for me. I've been using these for over a year now with no regrets. Well, I'll go into a couple of less than perfect things later on, but for now, let me give you the deets. They're described as archival art portfolios or presentation books. The covers are made of flexible textured polypropylene with woven trim. There are 24 bound clear protector sleeves. That means it can hold 48 items if inserted back to back. It looks like they're available in five solid colors and six different sizes. The ones I have are the black 5x7, which came as a two-pack for about $10, a dark silver 9x12 at around $9, and a dark silver 11x17 for about $15. Those are current prices, by the way, as of this recording. Personally, I found the 9 by 12 size the most useful for my purposes. In fact, the current one is now full and I need to get another one soon. Now, for the less than perfect part, which has nothing to do with the quality, but rather with my choices. Firstly, the 5 by 7. Turns out I don't create a whole lot with those dimensions, and when I do, those pieces are often given away. So 5x7 isn't that useful for storing my art pieces. On the other hand, I found them very useful for storing stickers and ephemera for collage work. Secondly, the 11 by 17 is a little too long for my largest pieces, which are 11 by 14. So that was just me getting the dimensions wrong. As for product quality, I have zero complaints. Remember when I said I was stashing my artwork in a drawer? Well, there's also a wire magazine rack, a clear lucite bin, and a couple of trays on my rolling cart that have all served as art resting places. For my most recent paintings and drawings, I mean, I really need to designate one bin for interim art storage, a holding cell, if you will, for those pieces awaiting a spot in my portfolios. But for the most part, I can now just pull one of these binders off my shelf to easily find a specific piece from my archive. And that's an enormous help, I tell you. 
You know what would be a good size to have? Six by nine. Because I sometimes cut a sheet of nine by twelve paper in half, making two six by nines. I can't be the only one doing that. So why the heck isn't that size available? As it is, I have to stick them into the 9 by 12, which is a tad irksome. Producer Mike likes to tease me about my fondness for containers. Seriously, you could drop me off at the container store, go see a movie, and come back to fetch me, and I'd be all, I'm not through yet. That's one of the reasons I can spend so much time at Daiso. All of their trays, bins, boxes, and such, they're practically endless. So, yeah, storage. I'm not saying this is the only way, nor am I saying it's the best way. I am saying it works for me, and has worked for over a year now. You could do worse. I mean, you could shove your art into a paper sack, which is something I've done in the past. But it was no fun pulling out a piece with a dust bunny hanging off the corner, especially when you have company. Here, let me show you my latest drawing. Oh, uh, pay no mind to the attached clump of hair. One of the nice things about sketchbooks and journals is that they are self-contained. Just place them on a shelf and they're good. Plus, it's cool to see them all lined up. It's a visual that gives one a sense of accomplishment. And who doesn't need a little taste of that now and then? The way these pieces are organized is very loosely, meaning rather than strict chronological order, they're grouped by year. So the beginning was 2020, then 2021, then 2022, and that's good enough for me. I have a hard enough time remembering to write the year on the backside of the pieces, but that really does help to maintain the timeline. If I were super organized, I'd include notes on the title of the video and the date of upload, but that's more of a type A thing. Nothing against type A's. They get things done, after all. But do people even still describe themselves in those terms? I recall that some years ago, you couldn't turn around without bumping into an online personality quiz. Some were more involved than others, some even charged a fee, and some were simply silly. Hey, I'm a big proponent of silliness, but after the twelfth, which animal are you? Even I start to wonder, hmm, am I wasting my time? Although most of my work is in the 9 by 12 size, there are occasions when I go a little bigger, specifically 11 by 14. Yeah, that was my fault. If I recall correctly, the size I needed was unavailable at the time, and I decided to just order the next larger instead. Look, having a too large portfolio is a small inconvenience. Sure, those paintings are swimming in there, but until I get my hands on the 11 by 14 size, I'm happy to have this. So, after touting the advantages of my system for the past eight minutes, I must confess that my last painting is missing. That's because it was in the interim stage I'd mentioned earlier, awaiting placement in its proper home. Well, I blame the fact that I recently cleaned my desk area, which includes the wire magazine rack, which is where I thought I put that piece, bringing us right back to the beginning of this video. If you ever feel as if you're in a real-life Escher drawing? I want to quickly mention a couple of artists I keep an eye on because I think some viewers here might also enjoy their work. The first is Nora Cag. I think it's said that way. Over on Instagram. 
she does watercolors and gouache. I love seeing her pieces show up on my feed, not just because they're often food and beverage related, but also because I dig her style. Second is YouTuber Donna Bowman. She does watercolors as well, often plenairing in her sketchbook. While watching her videos, I've often felt soothed and relaxed, and on more than one occasion, motivated to create. If you're interested, check them out. Links are in the description. To sum up, this is one of those art purchases I'm glad I made. At the time, I was torn. Spend funds on exciting new paints or on practical storage stuff? Luckily for me, I actually find storage stuff pretty exciting. So it was my pleasure to share these Dunwell art portfolios with you. Until next time, don't become a has this ever happened to you statistic. Get your artwork organized and stay artsy, my friends.